officers of Indian Army, teachers, participating students, participating women and villagers. First of all, I would like to congratulate Indian Army for working out this innovative program to have interaction amongst the students and other persons with the different groups and people in different parts of the country. The program is titled as Shadbhavna. Indian Army has a very long and glorious tradition. Basically, they are meant to protect our border from the invaders across the border. They, there is a saying that we can sleep in peace because we know our forces, they are vigilant in our borders, whether it is snow-capped mountain, whether it is sea, whether it is forests, or whether it is desert, they keep their vigil, remain sleepless, so that rest of the countrymen and women, they can live in peace. That is the tradition of Indian Army. In addition to that, nowadays, more than often, Indian Army is called upon to help the civilian authorities to maintain law and order, establish peace and normalcy in the troubled areas. Such troubled areas are from where you are coming, Jammu and Kashmir, Assam, and in some other parts of the country. They are our armed forces, are present to protect the life of the innocents, to restore normalcy. At the same time, they feel that they should undertake their responsibility of carrying on the process of national integration. India is a vast country. It has a long history and civilization. It is said, India is the house of the oldest civilization of the world, which is more than 5,000 years old. It has a very long history, history of not merely war and battle, but history of spreading civilization, spreading the message of peace, love, and harmony amongst people from different parts of the world. We speak in different language. We practice different religion. We have different systems and customs. Even in our dress, in our food, in our day-to-day -day life, there is differences, but still there is an underlying unity amongst all these differences, what is described as the unity amidst diversity. That is the beauty of India. That is the core of our civilization that we allow 
divergences, differences, to exist side by side in peace and harmony. And it can be realized when you come out of your home. Somebody who is in Eastern Ladakh, cut off from the rest of the country, you are practicing the teaching of Buddhism. Therefore, it would be of great interest to you to know from where Buddhism spread all over the world and therefore to take you to Bodh Gaya, to take you to Nalanda or Rajgir, located in Bihar. And there you will notice two sites two sides of the stories. One side, ancient civilization from where Lord Buddha preached his message of peace, love and harmony. On the other hand, in that ancient piece of land, how a modern state is being formed, advancing in science, technology, establishing industries. That is the story of the whole of India. When you go to Agra, you will see Taj Mahal, which is one of the marvels of architecture in the world, one of the wonders of the world. Side by side, you will see picture of the modern India, where oil refinery is functioning. Modern industries are functioning. You are going to Mumbai, Goa. Coming from the snow-capped mountain, you will find the marvel and magnificent beauties of seas, beautiful beaches, and also hub of industrial activities. These diverse cities, you will have when you go there and you will recognize all of them, all of you have one common identity. That identity is we are Indians. We are Bharatiyas. India is our land. Bharat is our land. We belong to that land. We are part and parcel of 5,000 years old civilization. We are the inheritors of those who led the humanity, who created many things, who enriched the civilization not only in India, but throughout the world. You will see a part of ancient India, you will see a part of modern India, which is one of the largest economy in the world, which is a vibrant modern society, which is attempting to <coughs> move in advance to take its rightful place in the committee of the nations amongst the advanced countries. And when you go back, you go back enriched. Wherever you go, you will carry the message of friendship, love, affection, and harmony. I wish you all success in this endeavor. I welcome you to Rashtrapati Bhavan. I welcome you to Delhi, which has also witnessed the ups and downs of Indian history from the days of Mahabharata to the days of Indian independence and liberation, transformation from colonial rule to the largest functional democracy of the world. Welcome you. Thank you.